One might ask, if the gospel is so wonderful, why would anyone leave? In fact, there's not just one reason that applies to the variety of situations. First, doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. Eventually, as she sought to find answers, more and more questions arose, and she began to question some of the very foundations of her faith. Sometimes questions arise because we simply don't have all the information and we just need a bit more patience. Not all gospel questions have answers yet, but they will and they'll come. I can live with some alleged scientific findings contrary to the Book of Mormon. Time will correct those. When the entire truth is eventually known, things that didn't make sense to us before will be resolved to our satisfaction. And to be perfectly frank, there have been times when members or leaders in the church have simply made mistakes. Suffice it to say, I can live with some human imperfections even among prophets of God. That is to be expected in mortal beings. We openly acknowledge that in nearly 200 years of church history, along with an uninterrupted line of inspired, honorable, and divine events, there have been some things said and done that could cause people to question. But as the questions grew harder, so did the answers. And sometimes there were no answers or no answers that brought peace. You've heard these questions. They're not new. They first arose in the neighborhood of Palmyra when the 14-year-old Joseph first reported his heavenly vision, and they continue in one form or another to the present day. There may have been things said or done that were not in harmony with our values, principles, or doctrine. And I can live with some seeming historical anomalies. They are minor in the total landscape of truth. A number of you commented about other troubling contemporary issues, issues that bring other kinds of fear, challenging the belief of our youth in sometimes aggressive ways. The historical or social concerns that some may have the alleged scientific conflicts, these are the sideshow. There are few members of the church who at one time or another have not wrestled with serious or sensitive questions. In the meantime, I have a question. What conceivable historical or doctrinal or procedural issue that may arise among any group could ever overshadow or negate one's consuming spiritual conviction regarding the Father's merciful plan of salvation, His only begotten Son's birth, mission, atonement, and resurrection, the reality of the first vision, the restoration of the priesthood, the receipt of divine revelation both personally and institutionally, the soul-shaping spirit and moving power of the Book of Mormon, the awe and majesty of the temple endowment, one's own personal experience with true miracles, and on and on and on. It is a mystery to me. Talk about a question. It is a mystery to me how those majestic eternal first-level truths so central to the grandeur of the whole gospel message, can be set aside or completely dismissed by some in favor of obsessing over second or third or fourth level pieces of that whole. To me, this is, in the words attributed to Edith Wharton, truly being trapped in the thick of thin things. We respect those who honestly search for truth. To those who have separated themselves from the church, I say, my dear friends, there is yet a place for you here. One of you phrased it this way. You wrote, it is getting harder and harder to teach the doctrine of the church without offending students who have become overly tolerant of the world's view. 
Some of our dear members struggle for years with the question whether they should separate themselves from the church. My friend thought, if Mother Teresa could live her religion without all the answers and without a feeling of clarity in all things, maybe she could too. Come and add your talents, gifts, and energies to ours. We will all become better as a result. Some might ask, but what about my doubts? It is natural to have questions. The acorn of honest inquiry has often sprouted and matured into a great oak of understanding. But some may respond, I believe all this, but how do I respond to the critics and their specific questions? That's why I say our manner, our method, our attitude and compassion will, once they're understood by our students, allow us to be as direct and as firm as we must be in proclaiming the commandments of God.